Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to host a Minecraft server on Ubuntu Linux and specifically for free for at least your first four months. Now that's thanks to, thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. They're giving us a free $20 credit towards our servers whenever we sign up here. So you guys will actually be able to run this for four months for free using the most basic plan on Linode. Now I know that you're like, well, how am I going to run a massive Minecraft server? What I would recommend you guys do is just get your Minecraft server set up on the cheapest plan, get everything working, and then you can always transfer over the world, the plugins and everything else to a different server once you've done that. So if you just want to mess with it and, you know, kind of do some administrative stuff, this is a good way to do that to start. So you can sign up, there's a link below, or you can also just use this code TWT19 and that will give you $20 off on Linode. Now let's kind of go through the steps here that we're going to need to take. But before I do that, I just need to make a really quick announcement. I am thinking about hosting a Minecraft server for the Tech with Tim community. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm only going to do it if I have enough interest. I also don't know what game mode to make it. So, you know, if you have an idea like factions, creative, whatever that is, leave a comment. Okay, so the first step that we need to do is on our host computer, so not actually the one that we're going to be running the Minecraft server on, we need to download this Minecraft server jar. Now, I would say just download this on Ubuntu. You can do that if you have a web browser on your Ubuntu machine and you can get to this Minecraft page. And again, there'll be a link down below, but this is just the Minecraft server jar. It's from the Minecraft website. Um, you need to, I believe, Actually, I don't think you need to be logged in to do this because I'm not logged in right now. But anyways, download that jar and we're going to transfer it over to our server once we get to that point. Now, the next thing we need to do is download PuTTY. Now, this is an SSH client. There actually is a built-in SSH client for Linode, uh, but it is kind of buggy and this just works a bit better. So that's why we're going to use this. So, you know, we can download PuTTY by clicking this. I already have it downloaded. Again, link in the description. We also need WinSCP, although you don't need to use this specific one, but you just need some kind of file transfer software like FileZilla where you can transfer things to your server. So download this. There's a link in the description. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to set up our server. So if you have your own Ubuntu machine, and you're going to be hosting this, you know, like you have access to that machine, like the physical device, then you don't need to follow this specific step. But if you don't, then follow along with me. What I'm going to do is create a new Linode. So I've signed up here, click that link. And what I'm going to do is choose my distribution as Ubuntu 18.0.4. Um, I would recommend you do anything at this level or above it to guarantee this tutorial is going to work for you. And then for my plan on Linode, you can pick between all of these. And if you want to run a four gig server for one month for free, you have that $20 credit. So you can do that. But I'm just going to pick this Nanode plan, which is the cheapest one. It's $5 a month. And then what I'm going to do here is give a name to my server and I'm going to call it tutorial. Now I also need to pick the region, which is up here. I'm going to pick Toronto, Ontario, as that's what I'm closest to. But you guys can pick through here. Um, these are just the different regions uh, Linode has. Now what I'm going to do is actually enter a root password here. This is how we're going to log into our server. So make sure this, this is secure and you remember the password. And then other than that, I think we're actually good to go. Now I will show you quickly here that um, this is actually really cool. Linode has a one click option for Minecraft servers. So if you click one click up here, you can actually just click Minecraft latest. And if you do this, it'll select, you can go through all of these settings and select and create a Minecraft server. The only issue with this is it creates a completely vanilla Minecraft server and you can't, um, what do you call it? Like modify it from the console. It's just really difficult to work with, but all, if all you want is like a vanilla Minecraft server, uh, then just do the one click Minecraft and that'll do it for you. Okay. So I realized clicking that, that cleared my thing. Anyways, I just filled this back in now. And what we're going to do is click create once we're done. This will take a second to boot up the node and get started. If you chose the one click option, this is going to take you probably like five to 10 minutes because it has to actually create the Minecraft server for you. But once this is done, I'll be right back and we'll move on with the next steps. All right, so now that we've booted up here, we're ready to grab the IP address of the server and connect to it. So to do that, what we're going to do is go to networking tab here, and we're going to look for this IPv4 tab and then this address right here. So mine is 172.105.21.129. Now don't give this to people unless they're going to be connecting to your Minecraft server. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to be deleting this after, so it's not really a huge deal. So anyways, that's our address. We need that. I'm going to copy that address onto my clipboard, and I'll show you quickly that if you want to SSH into this server really quickly, what you can use is just this launch console tab here, specifically from Linode, and it will bring up this right here. So you can see it's actually just running through some server commands, but this is the SSH that it has. Again, I'm not going to be using that just because PuTTY is a little bit easier to work with and it's nice to learn how to use it because you can use that for any server. So what I'm going to do is open PuTTY now. I'm assuming you guys have downloaded this. I'll zoom in here so you guys can see. 
But what I'm going to do is connect to the server. So I have that address here. So I'm going to put that as the host name or IP address. I'm going to leave this port as 22. And what I'm going to do is actually save a new session in putty so that I don't have to type this IP address in every time. So what I'm going to do is just save this as Minecraft server tutorial. You can see I have a few uh, things up here already and I'm going to click save. Now when I do that, it's going to save this profile. So it's going to save this port name and this host IP into putty. And I'm just going to do one more thing because I want to make the font a little bit bigger here so you guys can read it. I'm going to change my font size to 26 and I'm going to go back to logging now uh, or session, sorry, and just save one more time to Minecraft server tutorial. So now every time I run this, my font size will be 26 and we'll be able to see that from the console. So once we do that, we're going to click open. You can see it's going to bring up this kind of message. Just click yes. Everything's fine there. When we log in, we're going to log in as the root user on Ubuntu and we're going to put the password as whatever that root password is that you guys typed in when you created your server. Now this will take a second, but once we get in here, uh, we should see this kind of screen popping up and now we're actually going to get to starting to work on the Minecraft server. So what I'm going to do is just change directory back into the home directory. So I'm going to CD dot dot. I'm going to hit LS here. And now what I can do is choose where I want to put my Minecraft server. So I can put it in the root directory or the home directory. It doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is change directories into my home directory. So CD home. And when I do that, it'll bring me into home. And now what I'm going to do is create a new folder. So I'm going to say MKDIR, which stands for make directory. And I'm going to call this Minecraft. This is where I'm going to store all of the Minecraft files that I need. So now what I'm going to do is CD into Minecraft like that. And just I can type LS and you can see there's nothing in this directory. OK, so now that we've done that, what we need to do is transfer over the Minecraft server jar to this and put it inside of that folder. And this is where Win uh, SCP comes in. So I'm going to open Win SCP here. And this is just a file transfer client, right? So you guys can, you know, use whatever one you want, but this is the one for this tutorial. And what I'm going to do where it says new site is I'm going to put in the host name of our server, which is just simply the IP address on port number 22. I'm going to put the username as root and the password as that password. And I believe this blocks it out so I can type it in. Okay, now we will hit save. And we can save this as just the IP address, or you can call it, you know, Minecraft server, or whatever you want. I'll just save it as the IP address and then go ahead and click log in. It'll probably give you this message. Just click yes. And then you can type in that root password one more time should be able to gain access to the server. And now we can just kind of look through the file structure of our Ubuntu server. So you can see it starts us in the root directory, um, but we can go back by just clicking up here. And now we have all these directories and we can go into home. Now home is where we have this Minecraft folder. So we go there, we have Minecraft. And now what we're going to do is find that Minecraft server jar from our computer and drag it onto here. So mine is in downloads. I'm just going to find it on my other screen here because uh, I have a few things. So I'm going to take this server file. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but and just drag it in here. So I had it in my download. So I just took it and just dragged it in um, and we're good to go now. Now this will take a second to transfer over. Once this is done, I'll continue with the tutorial. and We'll keep going. Okay, so now we have this server.jar file on our Minecraft server, and we are actually good to just close this win SCP because we don't need this anymore. Now, I will quickly say, though, the reason I got you guys to download this as well is, well, obviously to transfer this over, but you can use this to back up your world. So if you want to make backups of your Minecraft world, what you can do is just log in here, take that world file, the world directory, and just drag it onto your home computer. And then that way you have a backup on another computer in case anything happens with your server. OK, so I'm going to close this and now we should still be logged in in this root panel now. So if I click LS now in here, you should see we have this server.jar file. So now what we need to do is actually create a script to run this server.jar file. Now, this is um, on the Minecraft website. They actually have the exact script to run here. So I'm just going to take this and copy this. So it's Java hyphen XMX 1024, whatever, or whatever, whatever. And it says Minecraft server 1.1.4.jar, no GUI. But we're going to need to change that to just say server.jar because that's the name of the server we downloaded. So I'll, I'll show you anyways how this works. What we're going to do is make a script that we can simply just run that will run the Minecraft server. So if we ever turn it off, we don't need to type that in. Um, it can just run it for us. So what I'm going to do is type nano. And I'm going to type nano start underscore server dot sh. So we're going to do nano start underscore server dot sh. 
Now that we have that, it should bring up this text editor. What I'm going to do is copy in that um, command that I copied. So I copied that from my home computer and to copy it in here, what I did is just right clicked on my mouse. You can't hit control V that's not going to work. Now, what we need to do here is modify this a bit depending on what you're using. So I'm going to tell you what these arguments mean here. So XMX and SMS stand for how much RAM you're allocating to your server. Um, and allocating just means like how much you're letting it use. Now, right now, this is saying 1024 megabytes of RAM is the minimum amount of RAM we'll use because that's XMS and 1024 megabytes of RAM is the maximum amount we'll use. So what you can do is if you have a server that has more than one gig of RAM, change this and bump this number up. So if you have two gigs of RAM, then you would change this number to be 2048. And you could change the bottom half as well here to be 2048. Now, since we only have one gig of RAM, we can just give it all of that. So 1024, 1024. And then when it says Minecraft server, blah, 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 dot jar, we just need to change this name to be whatever that server is that we dragged in. Now, in our case, our jar file is literally just called server dot jar. So we'll do that and we should be good to go now. So to save, what we can do is simply hit control X. It will ask you if you want to save, you can hit Y to save and then hit enter to save it as start underscore server dot sh. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, what we're going to do is just run a quick update on our machine before we do anything else. So just sudo apt hyphen get update. Now that's just going to update the machine for us to make sure we have the most recent version of everything we need. And this could take a while depending on how old the server is that you're using. So run that. Um, it'll take a second. I'll be back when that's done. All right. So the next step is to make sure we have a Java installed. Now I think you can literally just type Java and you can see um, if you have it, but this shows you the commands to install it. So apt install open JDK eight JRE headless. So once you run the, um, the installer, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, if for some reason it says like you don't have Java installed or that doesn't work, you can run these commands. So sudo apt install open JDK eight JRE headless. Now what the headless means is if you don't have a monitor and keyboard physically attached to the machine, that's the one you usually install. So in this case, we would install this one and then we should be good to go. Okay. So small realization, I don't have Java on this machine. I thought I did. So if you type Java, it tells you the exact command you need, um, to install it. So I'm just going to copy this apt install. Um, so now that I've done that, apt install, open JDK 8 JRE headless. It's going to install Java. It's going to ask me if I want to install this. I'll click Y for yes. We'll go through the install. And then once this is done, I'll be back and we should have Java and be ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is actually run and make that file that we just created an executable. So if we do LS, we see we have two files now. So start server.sh. And this is what we're going to do to run the server. So to make this an executable, what I actually need to do is do C H mod plus X and then do start server dot SH and hit enter. Um, okay. My bad there. So there's no, <laughs> there's no space. Um, or there is a space in between ch mod and plus x. I just didn't have it there, so I was confused. Anyway, so ch mod space plus x start server dot sh. This will make this file an executable for us. Now, for some reason, it says like you don't have permission to do this. Just type sudo before the, the command. So ch mod plus x and then start server dot sh. And the reason how I'm getting that is I'm just hitting tab once I do st and it fills it in for me. And what I will try to do is now run that executable file. So ls again, it's called start server dot sh. So to run this, we do dot slash start server dot sh and hit enter. Now, if you don't get any output immediately, just give it a second. Um, it takes a minute to load. So here, let's see what we actually just got now. So this worked. Um, this ran. I know it says failed to load properties from file server dot properties failed to load eula dot text. You need to agree to the eula in order to run the server. So what does this mean? Well, a lot of people get stuck on this, but what this does is just me. You have to agree to like the terms and conditions before it lets you run this. So if we hit LS now to list all the things you see, we have some new files. Now we have server dot properties. We have logs. We have eula dot text or however you say that. So what we're going to do is edit this eula dot text. Again, I'm butchering how you say that, but we'll do nano eula dot text. And now what we're going to do is literally just come in here and change this to say true. So we say true and then control X. Do you want to modify? Yes. We hit Y hit enter. Okay. Now that we've done that, what we can do is run the server again. And now it should start generating the world and actually creating the spawn area. Now this will take a few minutes. So I'm going to fast forward through it. Uh, but once this is finished running, I'll show you what it looks like. 
All right, so now the server is up and running. We're actually in like the main console. So the first thing I would ask, tell you guys to probably do is just op yourself. So you're gonna op your username. So just literally type in your username. Mine is Mr. Hippo Nine. I know, interesting Minecraft username. Anyways, we'll do that. Op your user, and then that way when you go on the server, you can actually, you know be an op and do stuff. So you might get these uh, things saying like, can't keep up, the server o overloading, it's running this many ticks behind. That's just because we only have one gig of RAM on the server. It's fine to run like one or two people on the server at once. If you're gonna be running like a lot of people, you need to have more RAM on your Minecraft server. But anyways, for now, that's fine. Okay, so now our Minecraft server is actually running, which means we can connect to it. So I'm gonna log into Minecraft and I'm gonna show you how we can connect, but it's pretty much as simple as literally just taking this IP address. So whatever one our server is and typing that in like the direct connect of Minecraft and just joining. Now make sure obviously when you launch Minecraft, you're in the right Minecraft version, um, but it'll tell you that if it's not working. So I'm gonna launch Minecraft, log in and then show you guys. And I'll be right back. All right, so I'm here in Minecraft now. I'm in the direct connect window. What I'm gonna do is just, you know, join the server now and show you that this does indeed work. Um, all right, let's see here. Okay, I am in the server and we can see that everything is working. This is actually an interesting spawn point. Wow, I never I haven't played Minecraft in a while. There's a lot of new stuff um looking like in the sea here. But anyways, I'm an op, so that means I can do like slash TP, I can do slash op, I can do all these commands, um, I can do everything, right? So that is how that works, and there we go, we are in the Minecraft server. So I mean, that's all good and nice. I'm just going to show you guys a few more things because I want to show you what happens if I close this. So the way that we're running the Minecraft server right now is this kind of the way the way that we're running it is connected to our display, which means that if I close this window, the Minecraft server will actually turn off. So I'm going to show you how we can run this without turning the Minecraft server off. So first to quit the server, I think I can just do quit or can I do like stop? Uh, yes, stop. So to stop the server from here, I'll do stop. We'll give that a second. It'll save the chunks, all of that. Now, if I want to run the server continuously, regardless of if I have this computer on or not, what I need to do is use something called screen. So start by typing screen and seeing if that works for you. Most computers should come with screen, um, but if you, for some reason you don't have it, what you can do is do sudo apt hyphen get install screen and then that should install it for you so again it'll read through do all this blah blah blah, blah. um and yeah anyways so what we're going to do is just type screen and then we're going to do dot slash start server um dot sh so by running screen before this it will detach this process from our display which means that the minecraft server will run continuously and we'll just be able to connect to it whenever so let's hit enter and you can see that it kind of gives us a little bit of a different um, look here now it gets rid of all that console stuff this will start running it will go the minecraft server will boot up and we will be good to go so that is kind of it for creating the minecraft server again i want to thank you say thank you to linode for sponsoring this video definitely take advantage of this 20 dollars credit linode is awesome they have a lot of support if you guys have any troubles with some of the stuff and setting some things up you can always contact linode they have a 24 hour um, support team and they will probably be able to help you or at least guide you in the right direction on what to do now, last thing here as well, um, Linode is actually opening a new data center by the end of 2019 in Australia. So if you guys are from Australia, that's actually pretty exciting because typically they don't have like hosting companies and servers that have anything in Australia. So that's a good way to take advantage of this and use it. So anyways, that has been it for how to create a Minecraft server. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what type of Minecraft server I should run for you guys in the future.